uh, respected uh, professor and head of uh, department of physical science dr vanita ma'am and uh, dear students uh, so this is a nice uh, this uh, 24 hour life today's topic is uh, on 24 hour life it's an emerging disease as ma'am discussed this is a new kind of emerging disease on chilli and other vegetable crops this uh, disease is very recent years we are uh, noticing on uh, like uh, chilli um, amaranthus and um, other uh, vegetables like uh, even okra dolichos and cowpea so uh, as a vegetable students uh, it will be good that uh, if you have an idea about that uh, emerging diseases of vegetables so this uh, topic will give some uh, idea and insight about the new emerging disease uh, so i welcome you all for another uh, presentation on the conifera blight which is infecting vegetable crops in india uh, uh, ma'am hope please confirm whether my voice is okay shall i continue yes ma'am yeah good afternoon uh, respect to professor and head of department of vegetable science and uh, dr vanita ma'am and the pg coordinator uh, and uh, dear students uh, that um, uh, as ma'am suggesting there are a lot of uh, no uh, new and emerging diseases are coming up day by day so the students uh, is as a vegetable um, science uh, department students it is better to know about that uh, recent emerging diseases of vegetables um, we at i started working on the emerging disease which is called uh, conifera blight this infects um, uh, majorly okra chilli and um, amaranthus and we are seeing uh, no every season we are uh, seeing it, uh, it it is getting into new host also even in ashwagandha we have seen very recently kaupi so the list is going on so let me get into the topic so i'll just uh, ma'am uh, shall i continue is it audible ho yes ma'am it is audible ma'am yeah fine so just i'll give some uh, introduction about this uh, uh, new disease called uh, conifera blight you can see the three photographs which we have taken very recently in eastern part of india odisha so the chilli you can see that uh, um, uh, it's a kind of wet rot on the fruit uh, it causes a twig blight leaf blight both on chilli as well as bendi and on amaranthus so now we are doing resistant breeding also to identify the resistant sources so let me give some introduction about the disease uh, maybe this uh, looks a very new uh, for you students because uh, when we have seen in 2020 and 2021 we even uh, have um, it's, it's a kind of new disease for us and we just started exploring uh, about this uh, disease and um, uh, hope if you have if you remember in jack the fruit rot of jack or jack inflorescence rot it is uh, caused by a called rhizopus so this conifera it, even though the name looks very different but this is you can say it's a kind of uh, sister fungi to that rhizopus so the family is same it's a mycorrhizae family and um, uh, many times it confuse it is uh, getting confused between the rhizopus and mucus even in the bread you might have, might have seen that uh, bread mold so it's a kind of very uh, close relative of uh, all those uh, fungi as uh, initially it means uh, it, it mainly comes during uh, no when uh, rainy season when there is a uh, continuous rain for like uh, no in between it may be a dry spell but during a rainy season it is a major problem and it causes like a leaf on uh, leaf leaf rot on fruit a fruit rot like that it infects every part of the plant but very typical diagnostic symptom is it produces a kind of pinhead like growth if you if this is a very you know Uh, through by your naked eye only you can see this kind of very clear uh, the sporangia and sporangia four if you can call it is like on the tip there is a pinhead like uh, no um, fruiting body develops so it's very easy to diagnose once if you know that is uh, a kind of disease which is caused by conifera then further uh, you can uh, no um, um, uh, taking to next stage so coming to the scenario world scenario about this conifera blight on uh, uh, many crop plants um, it is not alone in india it is uh, reported from many parts of the country many, many parts of the world uh, mainly chilli squash and even pumpkin peas beans amaranthus okra and many other ornamental and uh, medicinal plants 
but however first it was reported in hibiscus only as a flower and uh, followed by squashes and uh, capsicum amaranthus so the list is uh, going on and um, uh, we can um, uh, know in 2021 we could uh, do elaborative study on chili um, twig blight which is caused by the species called uh, conifora bucarbitiarum so that uh, you can say this uh, distribution is uh, vast and uh, you know, it is um, spreads across the tropical and subtropical region it, uh, actually it starts as a saprop this is a mainly as a saprophytic fungi but it, it, it uh, very, when it get an opportunity it uh, infect it become a pathogen and it infect the wider uh, hosts coming to the uh, scenario under indian condition so this is uh, no even though there are many records earlier day, till 1990 there are very few you can say few uh, documentation of this uh, uh, disease but um, after 2020 you can say uh, after uh, like um, uh, 2010 onwards if you see the literature um, so it uh, it uh, started uh, many researchers started reporting on various uh, crops for example uh, um, betrot and capsicum even though it was uh, reported in 1995 after 2010 there was uh, no there were no much uh, reoccurrence but after that it was slowly uh, reported from other crops like gorvia then ashwagandha then tolicus even in uh, uh, 2016 it was reported from cauliflower from haryana then lab lab in west bengal in tulsi also then the minor cucumber bit called uh, diesel gourd then even leaf blight on papaya it was uh, reported from west bengal in 27 um, 2017 then uh, uh, chilli again in um, 2018 it was uh, reported in a severe form in telangana followed by the reported from uh, eastern india odisha on uh, three crops like chilli okra and amaranthus this we have uh, no published in uh, indian water pathology in 2021 so mainly if you see majorly these uh, you know conifora it infects uh, the vegetables followed by some ornamental crops then medicinal crops so this is uh, you know um, may uh, this uh, conifora uh, the fruiting body occurrence very clearly you can see on this uh, copy uh, even this was reported from kerala this photograph i have taken from the literature only then uh, this is on gods and uh, squash so you can see this uh, reports uh, various reports from parts of uh, no our country during 2017 and 18 before that not much report these all are first report of conifora there are two species actually conifora cucurbitiarum and conifora uh, infantibulifera there are two species only earlier there were so many uh, confusions but uh, now all they removed and only they kept two species which are infecting number of uh, host crops so why i am uh, no uh, displaying all this first report this is an emerging disease so to highlight it only i am just presenting all these things these all reports are from india and which were almost after 2015 only so the changing weather pattern may be the reason so coming to the uh, no this is uh, the new disease so uh, some uh, no insights i want to give uh, even though you are a vegetable uh, uh, no department student but Uh, there are two species so very clearly we can identify little bit i want to uh, give some information about uh, the pathogen also um as i told there are uh, no several species of uh, conifera was reported earlier but uh, the kirk in 1984 he means he narrowed down finally he has brought out a monograph for this particular pathogen then only two now it is um, prevailing that is cucar bitarum and infant bulbara all earlier uh, no species which are uh, reported were uh, synchronized and uh, they brought under the two taxa taxa uh, means uh, species so the key character so i told only two species one is cucar bitarum and another one is uh, infantibulifera so uh, very clear easy to identify here even molecular tools are not required even though through confirmation for further next level identity we can go for molecular uh, no characterization otherwise uh, the cucumber bitarum you can see that very it's like uh, no ellipsoid and, and uh, longitudinally striated you can see that uh, um, photograph left side is uh, cucumber bitarum where striations will be very much visible on the uh, oval shaped uh, sporangiola but in case of infantibulifera that uh, sporangiola uh, they are typically uh, like ovoid to subglobose but 
the clear distinguishing character is uh, they are not striated the surface is very smooth so here comes the question what is that sporangiola and sporangiola what is sporangia and sporangiola what is the difference so simply nothing but uh, the sporangia uh, no um, it has uh, no uh, spore it has two three uh, sporangia spores inside that and these are very uh, like a taxonomical point of view uh, so um, for a, no i don't want to go very deep for a vegetable scientist students so very easy well, here my message is that cucurbitarum uh, and infundibulifera are very easily it can be uh, no detected uh, and uh, under microscope only but still uh, no further now we have options for further confirmation so we can go for a molecular characterization also to confirm further so here we have done a molecular phylogeny here this is called uh, no internal transcribed spacer region where it's a very simple you uh, know uh, primary barcode region for fungi you can say with the tts region sequencing only we can confirm whether this is uh, no our uh, target uh, uh, species is uh, polytetrachum cucurbitarum uh, uh, or whether it is conifora uh, infundibulifera so here our uh, species what we were working with the chili that is uh, actually due to the conifora cucurbitarum uh, so we, we after sequencing we can uh, download the available uh, no, conifora species from the ncba g plan uh, all uh, nearby from there we can download and if we make a phylogeny it will uh, very clearly it will show our uh, is audible clearly yes ma'am it is clear here okay i will proceed so okay. this is the report we have published in 2021 and uh, on the report of uh, conifora earlier uh, there were some documentation but no clear cut uh, no uh, uh, documentation about that uh, uh, conifora on uh, chili um, in case of chili this is becoming you can say now a major problem in gundur area also where it's uh, no you can say it's a chili bowl now there lot of problem during the rainy season mainly in the seed production plots so this is an occurrence a very recent occurrence we could document in many parts of our country even telangana east godavari and madhya pradesh so initially we were taught, we were taught, means when farmers are telling it they will tell the symptoms at the end stage only so we thought it is initially a twig blight caused by uh, colichotrichum uh, usually that also causes a twig blight but uh, the symptoms are uh, now very typical if you see uh, that uh, pin head like a uh, uh, spora the fungal fruit fruiting body is very much visible um though, so although this uh, we could collect the uh, symptoms and um, though by you uh, know conversation we could uh, you know ask them to send the sample and we uh, we confirmed all our uh, the new, uh, this uh, new kind of uh, twig blight of uh, chili it is not uh, due to polytrichum because unless otherwise we identify or diagnosis uh, disease properly we cannot go for a management because these both are you know different uh, completely in a different at the taxonomic level this conifora as well as polytrichum is you know north and south so unless otherwise we can uh, confirm what is the actual pathogen involved it will be very difficult to uh, go for a proper management so here comes the proper identification so now after uh, uh, so even though this disease is in a you know um, like by looking it is very simple to manage but uh, during rainy season uh, uh, we have a very less chance uh, or we can we have very less uh, gap uh, uh, to go for a fungicide spray so morning will spray again afternoon it will rain because this uh, disease is mainly occurs uh, during the rainy season so during dry spell only we can spray uh, then also um, uh, giving too much of a systemic spray uh, no it's not advisable and contact sprays are not contact fungicides are very uh, no least effective so keeping that in mind we started uh, screening because uh, having a resistant source is always a good option um uh, for uh, disease management otherwise uh, during rainy season we have to go for n number of sprays the, so to avoid that um no always having a resistance a resistant source is a uh, better choice to incorporate into the breeding program so we were uh, um, means almost around 100 uh, lines we have screened uh, whatever available germplasm we have at ihr we screened it and we could uh, no uh, come up with two lines even though they are not resistant but they are uh, Uh, they showed uh, some tolerance but still uh, the screening work is in progress and we had to identify a very good uh, uh, resistant source for this but in amaranthus we could get a complete uh, resistant lines you can say there is 0% you can say it's a immune 
uh, that much uh, resistance source we could uh, get it but chilly that process is still going on so this is the protocol we have uh, no developed for artificial inoculation of the cooker culture this um conifora cooker bjrm by katwig method um so as well as uh, we confirmed uh, those lines which were showing a uh, kind of a moderate tolerance also uh, we again uh, put it on the potted uh, condition and we again we uh, no reconfirmed so out of that uh, we could identify two lines ihr bhp 18 and uh, triple 11 which are tolerant to cooker which are to certain extent only so stony for a blight uh, on okra this is also a very recent occurrence even when i was a student i have never seen this disease and uh, even after 2000 you can say 2020 only we could see in many host not all of, here i am showing that um, you know uh, diseases which are occurring on vegetables even medicinal plant we have seen this kind of you uh, know um, um, wet rot caused by conifora this is on okra this is a pathogen this pathogen no very quickly it will uh, know you have to inoculating the 8 mm uh, disc within a uh, no time like within two days it will cover the entire plate and it will start producing the fruiting bodies so it's very quick so that is an a uh, challenge before uh, you know um, uh, the pathologist to manage the disease when it is very quick in growth though then it will produce multiple n number of millions of spores in a single day so like uh, like phytophthora so here this is the uh, challenge uh, you know in management of this particular disease even in uh, okra it causes uh, uh complete death of the whole plant when it is very early stage and it causes leaf rot as well as uh, no some more symptoms i can i show on fruit also it causes fruit rot after flowering that you uh, know the leftover uh, fruit flower portion no it invites the first the infection then slowly it spreads to the fruit also and causes the fruit rot so after uh, knowing that incidents uh, you know in our research form first um so we have uh, conducted extensive survey in uh, no major districts of odisha where uh, up to 35% incidents were uh, no documented in farmers be but farmers uh, since they are unable to uh, no diagnose it uh, they just left it like you uh, know uh, without any control measure but when we are conducting survey it will help us to know the extent extent uh, no, how much um, the disease is uh, no prevalent Uh, so accordingly we can focus our research work on that uh, particular disease so for in that case the survey is very very important because many farmers are not uh, bringing the new disease to the knowledge of the um, you know the scientist or um, near to the institute so in that case when we approach them or uh, no when we are going for survey we can know what is the actual level of damage the uh, new emerging because if the disease is already prevalent and years so they they will also know what is the problem but when it comes to the emerging disease we have to be proactive to conduct a uh, no proper documentation and uh, after knowing the severe uh, severity of the disease we can uh, go for developing a suitable management strategies so this uh, how we have started actually um, with many uh, existing no fungicides as well as the new molecules so this work also it's in progress um, this because as it's only 2 3 years old so we have started uh, screening the chemical and what are the chemicals which are you no know, showing effective like uh, new molecules like tebigunazole diphenoconazole and hexaconazole those are all our systemic fungicides and uh, um, we are you know planning to take to the next stage of uh, no spraying because this is not a year round disease when uh, disease is prevalent that only we can go for you uh, know spray uh, uh, evaluating in the field condition coming to the third one it is same conifera leaf blight on amaranthus so this is also in 2021 uh, on, uh, during karif season only we could see at uh, our research plots of ihr both in our region station at uh, odisha as well as ihr at bangalore uh, so we have never uh, see uh, even though we are working here uh, no we have never seen this uh, conifera blight on amaranthus this is a first time we are uh, seeing the uh, problem in amaranthus also probably due to the change in weather pattern or high moisture and humidity as uh, no uh, at a time, time and uh, this must have evolved as a facultative parasite so these also the samaranthus uh, conifer also the species we have uh, no identifies conifer bucca bigiara by both the taxonomic tools as well as by mon i told earlier uh, though we here also we are uh, no uh, started screening uh, as i told this is uh, no mainly occurring uh, 
during the rainy season so we can, we cannot go for a continuous spray uh, of uh, these leafy vegetables uh, because this is a very short duration vegetable and moreover uh, this is uh, no always it's not advisable to go for a uh, fungicide spray for a, a crop like you uh, know amaranthus where uh, uh, no <coughs> residue level will be very high so we started immediately screening the available uh, germplasm with ihr uh, we uh, we have screened almost 100 lines whatever uh, in our gene bank um no surprisingly uh, no under natural epi first because we have not yet developed any protocol for uh, screening under artificial conditions for amaranthus so we have um, planted under the uh, natural epiphytotic condition during the proper season and uh, uh, we could uh, now out of 100 lines around when we screened we got one line ihrbam 286 it's completely you uh, know you can say zero uh, percent uh, disease incidence we could uh, see but these are all planted adjacent to each other in a very crowded manner so that it will invite you uh, know this pathogen spread also will be more and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, really get whether it is resistant or susceptible so you can see the nearby line ihrb am 39 is highly susceptible you can see some more lines also which are you know uh, uh, the top lines all are uh, highly resistant and uh, three resistant line uh, we got in different you uh, know segments but uh, in the down all three are uh, highly susceptible lines so this is a coordinated team work actually we have uh, taken up in 2021 and 2022 so this uh, highly resistant line um, it's in the process of registration with the nppgr for uh, the conifera blight resistant that same line shown uh, the resistant to white rust also so that is a uh, no very potential line we have uh, on uh, the process we have uh, initiated over resistance so what are the available management strategies we have for uh, managing this conifera blight one is um, always for any disease uh, only the fungicide spray is not advisable so we have to follow the available idm management strategies and uh, here one thing we have seen uh, since the since this conifera blight occurs during the high moisture condition allowing air flow on dry plant canopy will help in uh, suppressing the disease and another one the plastic mulch uh, can help in minimizing the fruits uh, contact of fruits with a uh, moist soil and infected plant debris especially when uh, no if in case of chili and okra uh, the infected uh, that pathogen uh, no initiates from the infected plant debris which are fallen on that so all infected debris or whatever uh, the infected plant uh, pots uh, should not be thrown on the field only so it should be collected and uh, no plastic mulch uh, it helps to some extent to avoid the contact you know fruit contact with the moist soil and plant debris and we have started the laboratory evaluation but the field level evaluation has to be done it is no oh, it's it is a as it's a new disease the process is you know it will take one or two year to complete and in meantime that whatever resistant source you know we can find out with that available our gene bank or germ plasm that would be a potential for the further resistant breeding because we have to be a uh, no proactive in resistant breeding otherwise when the disease in our times in a very severe proportion at uh, no in farmers field then suddenly we cannot uh, no jump into that uh, to uh, get a resistant source so we have already at ihr we have already you no know, started this work in amaranthus we got a very good resistant line and in uh, um, chilli we got a two tolerant lines and but in okra we have had to start uh, the work on that so here my message uh, ma no what are uh, about this conifera even though this uh, name looks very you know no new for everyone but uh, as uh, this pathogen started expanding its coast especially in vegetable crop uh, so who and all involving in the vegetable you know breeding or uh, as a pathologist uh, they should be you know uh, they should know what is what are the diagnostic you know symptoms uh, under field condition in the crops so here as i told it's a very uh, no um, easy to identify because uh, it has you know very good uh, fruiting bodies which we can diagnose it very quickly and uh, we can come to with a simple laboratory microscope only we can confirm what pathogen it is even up to species level um as uh, no uh, year by year even i am seeing it that this pathogen is expanding its host so we may expect uh, this may be a problem in uh, days to come in more crops like uh, uh madolicas you know or madolicas or vegetable copy whatever it may be other vegetables even in garden pea we have seen recently so as this pathogen is more vigorous during rainy season um so uh, 
uh, even though it is very severe but one point advantage is this even though this is very vigorous during rainy season but uh, even and destructive but it is very short lived matlab what is that uh, when it is uh, no of unfavorable condition a, a, a span of a dry spell for example 4 5 days occur means then uh, so it will stop the you know uh, spread uh, it will not uh, further spread but uh, during like uh, no monsoon season uh, when uh, the rain is continuous then uh, this pathogen continuous continuously it will spread very quickly but in between the rain if a dry spell then uh, it will not unless the favorable condition reoccur it will not spread so uh, as of now uh, even though we have uh, no shortlisted some uh, um, chemicals but uh, see with that uh, all vegetables um, uh, going for you know, every disease new new molecules spraying it's not at all uh, no uh, accepted by you from our scientist perspective as well as from our uh, consumer perspective so looking for a resistant source in every you know host plant wherever uh, this monifora is a problem that is the best way to tackle this emerging disease uh, so uh, even um, after uh, seeing this symptom many may think okay, okay i have seen this disease on that particular crop like that many uh, may you no know, now started Uh, rethinking that so even uh, yesterday i have seen for you uh, know we went for uh, some field visit i have seen this disease in squash so like that um, um, before 2020 i even never knew that uh, this uh, this is a disease i thought some saprophyte fungi but now this is uh, slowly expanding its host range so as a vegetable scientist or plant pathologist we have to be very cautious about uh, the new host and uh, and um, as a scientist or um, post graduate students you also can start working on the uh, no um, aspect of resistant uh, finding the resistant source in the uh, crops which will be very much you uh, know advantageous uh, for us uh, rather than going for a uh, informative uh, uh, discussion uh? audible is it audible sankita doctor yeah yeah it's audible ma'am it's audible okay Uh, so it is uh, season uh, relevant as well as it is easy identifiable now you know that this disease is very easy identifiable that for management uh, uh, it's not uh, that much of effective uh, i think so uh, what about your uh, no management actually ma'am it's only you know when we started identifying this is just it was like 2021 only we, we have to go a long way Uh, no, as of now, there is no uh, management strategies developed by anyone yes. in India. Yes. Uh, like like jackfruit, you know, rice was not causing jackfruit. Yeah, yeah. Young uh, jackfruits are falling, you know, rice was not. Uh, still, we are not finding any control measures. Like ideal measures are not there. Yes, rice was not. Even one thing I want to share actually. Uh, when we started studying uh, what is the fruit crops even in case of jackfruit this whatever uh, jackfruit rot you no know, uh, this rice opus it infects mainly male plasma actually uh, when the crop even we take up the grafted uh, jackfruit seedlings even uh, you know it will start producing the female flower after uh, 7 years only but this male flower will start uh, comes you uh, know even uh, in fifth year or sixth year only similarly in the crop season also if you see that uh, jackfruit crop uh, male flower will start appearing early and female flower little bit late so i am feeling you uh, know uh, this uh, jackfruit crop also the male inflorescence uh, rot it is means uh, the jackfruit crop also it mainly infects the male rather than female female it will start growing as a fruit so there you will not get the infection of uh, this you uh, know um, rhizopus but whatever for fruit fallen we have checked it extensively those all are male fruits so uh, male 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 flowers so after the pollination over it has no purpose to stay on the tree so it will fall yeah so that fallen fruits all or um, fruits which are on the tree also which are having the rhizopus it's mainly only on male flowers not on the female female flowers after no getting fertilized it will start developing as a um, fruit so this is a when since you have started discussion on that line just i want to show you know i want to express that point also we have checked almost all infected uh, uh, jack leaf 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 mainly it affects on leaf you know uh, in case of conifera ma it infects a leaf a twig as in well tamil nadu we are not finding uh, such kind of symptoms still now i didn't across through the any vegetable crops but here after yeah, we look over 
Yes, yes, ma'am. It is there in Kerala because there uh, the uh, uh, rainy season is a uh, long. Kerala, so yes, there so Kerala. Oh. Uh, may, maybe uh, Tamil Nadu it may take time, or it, if we are, uh, it is not that we can be happy, but still it is slowly spreading, ma'am. During rainy season, it yeah, is visited. Fast visit, spreading, know, yeah. Some other blight we found, but it it is also similar to this. Found, uh, found very fast spread. But you know, uh, it is not nice. Of nice, and I got a, a new information regarding a new kind of the disease that is emerging all over India. And I might doubt is you have given the management uh, as the new molecule, molecular chemical that is azole group of chemicals. But what is the exact dosage we have to apply? Uh, Ma'am, actually that's what these all uh, you know laboratory screening only. Uh, but uh, whatever we have found, it is 0.05 percent. It means 0.5 uh, uh, ml per liter. Means 0.05 percent. Mm -hmm. But this data has to be evaluated under field condition, ma'am. Just we have started laboratory screening only because, as I told, it's a very new emerging disease, and moreover, it is very seasonal born. So, you no, know, to develop suitable, you uh, know, management strategies under field condition, it will take another one or two years. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, apart from this, I have another doubt, ma'am. So, for biocontrol agent and all, like the concentration is like very uh, different in. Different in different cases, ma'am. So, what could be the optimum concentration as we could uh, suggest overall to a farmer or to a, for our learning, ma'am? Biocontrol agents, trichoderma, tudamunas, and other plant, Bavaria bisena, metarsonia, and something like that, and all. Uh, you are asking for this uh, disease, ma, or it is uh, generally you are asking? Generally, ma'am, just for an. Uh, actually, for general, if you are talking about general, actually, we are not. Uh, no, we are always. Uh, we said yes, we are recommending only that uh, FIM enriched with the formium. Uh, so, in this case, uh, uh, because uh, the farmers uh, have to take, like, for example, if it is 1 ton of formium manure, they have to mix 1 kg. 1 kg of trichoderma thoroughly and with uh, intermittent watering, means uh, uh, applying a little bit drizzling of water. Uh, they have to cover it. Uh, uh, not too much wet, but they have to apply little, uh, no, with a rose, uh, rose can, and they have to cover it with the uh, uh, coconut leaves under the shade. So within 15 to 20 days, it will just cover the whole tons of, uh, no, one ton of FIM that one they can apply. So we are recommending this much, uh, no, like uh, uh, enriched FIM enriched with bicontrol agent, whatever it may be, like uh, trichoderma or bavaria or um, uh, this all bicontrol agents. We are asking to enrich the FIM. And the enriched FIM, they can apply for a hectare. Okay. Um, another doubt is like Chrysoperla, that green lace wing larvae, if we, leave, if we want to leave in the, uh, uh, for example, an hectare, what is the larval concentration we have to leave in the population?